Hey what is up guys, Matt Cooper here aka MODC Architecture and welcome back to another video. Now today what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be talking about what I learnt from the Architecture Association, what I learnt this year, the five main points that I learnt that sort of gives us sort of a snapshot into what we do or what is taught so that you can decide whether you want to go there or, or whether you found that you've been learning the same sort of things as me. I'd be really interested, let me know in the comments if you have been learning the same sort of stuff as me. Yeah, I'd be really interested in knowing what uh, other architectural schools are doing and how your education is going because, yeah, having 50 subscribers means that, or having having people watch my content is amazing and I'd love to know how you are all doing. Now, before I get into the video, please do hit that like button and uh, subscribe to me around here and hit that notification bell so that you know when I've uploaded and, uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's get into this video. So, number one, what I learnt uh, this year, one of the most important I think which I was never good at doing but I've, I've now managed to some or I've managed to really learn and really progress in this is how to present I was terrible at presenting before the architectural association and now with the help of my three amazing tutors uh, I've been able to you know quite simply do these 10 minute presentations which are super important and uh, behind a camera as well with everyone focusing on you with not really being able to read the room and how it's going, just being able to see these sort of s choppy pictures on um, on Microsoft Teams, it's, it's hard to uh, sort of present with confidence, I suppose. And this year's really, really helped me progress with that. So, in sort of in specifics, I'm going to do a video on each of these specifically, or each of these points specifically down the line. However, just to give a sort of a brief overview of why or how I've become better at presenting just sort of having uh, that sort of confidence about you that projecting your voice into the into the microphone you know into the microphone even though you know it's probably going to be or next academic year it's probably going to be uh, in a room with people still being able to project that voice just to give off that sort of confidence of you know your project you need to be able to project or look like at least you know your project in order to do well in a tables during crit whatever you want to call it next is having sort of a point each page i used to just sort of run this narrative along along my um sort of project and at brighton that's what i used to do and i have yeah i'd have this of i suppose a vague point of each page but just really have a storyline and sort of move along in quick succession and really take and really sort of stay on page for the same amount of time you know so so page one would have this uh the same time on it as page 30 or something like that you know to have each page have a bit of indiv individuality about it so what i'm talking about is that initial title page to hold on that title page to hold on that brief snapshot of your final design and then for pages five to six which is perhaps your site analysis which you can just sort of skip over just to go right here's my site analysis here's why it's this site and uh this is what i found from the site move 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 you know moving on really quickly so that you can then go on to explain your project in a bit more detail down the line again i will go over this in a separate video because there's so much more to it than just what i'm saying so number two I suppose number two is Rhino work and going from Rhino to Maya and just sort of exporting and just computer work in general. Computer work in general I suppose is sort of the broad spectrum of the next few points but Rhino is the specific point in this. Rhino is so important, it's industry standard as well for one, it's industry standard. Um, it can help you create these incredible shapes and give sort of legibility to your building I suppose, make you you're building in three dimensions uh, before you even start drawing a plan you know that's that's how I managed to come up with my uh, I suppose fourth year third year project um, which maybe isn't the best way to do it but it, it worked because Rhino is such a usable tool so compatible granted I did do some my work beforehand but Rhino really gave some sort of rigidity to the project and actually sort of made me realize that the that the could be designed and actually could look good um it took a long time and i probably stopped designing too early in my year but rhino was absolutely integral to it and learning the shortcuts and stuff learning how to do snapshots just really basic stuff that i didn't actually 
so yeah, running so doing these sort of um snapshots uh editing views you know just being able to do these sort of simple commands grasshopper massively helped so all that sort of thing in rhino that all encompasses into rhino and again i'll go over it in another video however i'm just outlining what i learned this year and sort of it, i guess it will propel me on to do five more videos um of of what these things are so yeah massive video on rhino and grasshopper coming up and how it helped me do association number three photoshop i learned again i thought i was quite good at photoshop i thought i had a good background knowledge of what to do and how to do it and geez i i learned a lot in um this year about photoshop with just sort of tinkering less so now because you know you know about all the layer masks and all of that sort of stuff however using what i found really interesting and really helpful for my renders is using the camera raw filter to be able to touch up everything uh just a little bit sort of every element in the image so really the uh, the command you need to know once you finish the drawing is control i think it's shift control or e or control or e um one of the two but what it does is it compresses everything into everything you've got visible into one layer and then puts that layer on top and then you use the camera roll filter in order to edit and uh, change the vibrance the hues you know the saturation the brightness the contrast the colors the highlights the shadows all of that everything you know luminosity all of that in one place in that camera roll filter where you can really pop make make colors pop so if you want the blues to pop and you want the oranges but then you want the whites to just be toned down for some reason i don't know you know it, the possibilities were endless and it was so 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 helpful for me you know it, it saved me if i'm honest it saved me that little trick it saved me at the end when i did when i was on this two-month hiatus i was doing a a load of work and it saved me really um that kind of rendering um that photoshop rendering um another thing in photoshop to use as well is these um lens flares i i use lens flares it's crazy to me that i didn't use them before and i i, I can't believe that you know I, I it just seems so simple it just seems so obvious to me now however back then when i had no idea how to do it or what what i was doing i suppose at the start of the year I, it never just sort of clicked that this could work but then to use sort of the darker multiply you know soft um soft lighting hard lighting uh functions in the photoshop layer um section i'll just sort of point it out um and then combining that with the lens flares and stuff um really really helped uh, helped more than i ever really thought it could and i suppose now it's time to pr propel what i've um propel what i've learned or and um really move forward with it and really sort of complete the project or, or do some more views of the project that i that was working on in fourth year do some more project work on that so that i can develop my skills further and i'll do that with you guys as well uh, if there's anything you want me to run over then i'll absolutely do it i'll do a tutorial on it it just i may need a little bit more time sometimes to research into it and learn how to do it but i will do that for you number four <coughs> maya maya is massively important to me because it really kick-started the design process and it kick-started it in a way that i never really thought possible you know i, I with working with these tutors from zaha i was sort of i suppose i allowed myself to be influenced by what i know that zaha do and i suppose i tried to impress the tutors in such a way that i wanted to make it look like you know look zaha-esque um in terms of curvature and you know making the buildings look really naturally formed curvature and stuff so i really got into maya um and doing a lot of maya modeling and doing a lot of cataloging of different a lot of different iterations you know really only took me about half an hour to an hour to do all these iterations uh, if i was efficient about it really more like three or four hours but you know that's just student things um just doing these iterations and iterations and cataloging these different things just so that i could create this natural forming shape and the end of my project you can see this this sort of natural forming shape i suppose it's not the prettiest it's not the best piece of work probably but i'm happy with the process and i'm happy with how i went from a to b and a lot of that journey 
was done with Maya. Maya is a very important just helps you I suppose it creates these these shapes for you without even a second thought you know you it takes sort of almost sketching these things out of the equation but sketching is massively important don't get me wrong but it takes the the time that you take in sketching all these sort of really fluid shapes it takes it out of it for me and Maya it, it it's a massively important after the initial ideas process which is often where you do your sketching um, and then use Maya to then propel your project into either Revit or Rhino uh, and then you use Grasshopper to develop it you create your design, put it through your Adobe programs as well so yeah it's it's yeah it's Maya hugely important for me uh, now on to number five I believe number five Point number five for me probably is I've learned how to manage my time a hell of a lot better. Um, my time management was pretty decent, I thought, um, in real life, in you know normal life pre-COVID. Um, however, during COVID, I managed. I, I I didn't get the time balance right. You know, I with everything shutting down, I found myself focusing on uni work, and with everything that happened to me personally. Um, in September through to about January, February, um, I found myself really only working and excelling because of it, I suppose. Um, but because I was only working, that's all I really knew. I didn't really do much outside. You know, I maybe saw my friends once or twice, um, but I was sort of working 12 hours a day or 10 hours a day, it felt like, for seven days a week without much break. And this third term, because we have a Michaelmas, Lent and summer term as schools do, you know, the, we have um, that third term. Things started to open back up and I suppose I got a little too carried away. I was still putting in the same amount of time. However, on top of that, I was doing, you know, three or four hours of cricket a week or maybe five hours of cricket practice a week and then playing a game on Saturday and Sunday and still putting in the same amount of work, which in turn tired me out and everything that happened with my dad... Um, the personal thing that happened with my dad um, all of that sort of came and rushed back up to me and basically I felt like I got overhauled with emotions stress um, didn't have enough time or was yeah just tiring myself out with doing all of this um, so that kind of screwed me basically and that's why I stopped YouTube uh, for two and a half months in order to focus on my studies uh, which you should always do first you should always focus on your studies however you need to get that balance right and I was probably working the same amount of time because I wasn't as efficient as I was um, initially because I'd added on these things to make me more tired so yeah time management massive video coming on that because that's probably the most important thing in your sort of architectural bow I suppose is to be able to manage your time well, to be able to prioritize things, to be able to know what to work on and how to do it and where to look if you don't know how to do it. So yeah, that's um that was a massive thing for me. So thank you so much for watching this video. I've gone through five five things which really helped me in the Architecture Association and what I've learned the most in these five things. Um, obviously there's all the content that I learned, which is, you know, there's heaps of it and I'll go through some of that, I suppose, if, uh, if you'd like in another video. Um, but thank you so much everyone for watching. Please do make sure to leave a like, subscribe and hit that notification bell if you're new around here. Uh, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you and yeah, see ya.